Okay. So, just some theory things. So, you're comfortable with horizon lines and vanishing points at this point, right? So you know that they're basically just a, a tool at your eye level. Okay. So, what you do is you practice with vanishing points on the page for a while, and that gets your theoretical understanding up. And then when you're drawing realistically, they're in your head, and you don't need them need to put them like on the page anymore. So like, if you're drawing two point perspective, a lot of times the vanishing points are gonna be off the edge of the page, and the further off the page they are, generally speaking, the more realistic it's gonna look. Um, but because when they get on the page, then you're cramming too much information into the into the page, um, and then distortions start to happen. So. Let's just say you have a plane, right? Which is just a triangle. Right? Triangle. Okay. So it looks like, it, geometrically, it looks like a triangle, right? But what it actually is is a rectangle going way, way back in space. Yep. You see that? Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do is reconcile 2D and 3D together. So, um, the subdivision of a rectangle is pretty easy. So any 2D shape you can draw, you can translate into linear perspective using that idea, right? So if I want to take a rectangle and then subdivide it into four, right, just by drawing across through it, what you'll notice is that the center is crossed by an X, right? Does that make sense? So what you do, is you draw an X onto your trapezoid, right? And the intersection of this X gets you the subdivision in both directions, right? So you're, it's like British flag kind of effect. Do you see that? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so that point, so you'll notice that this distance right here this is larger than this distance because of the receding thing in a two-dimensional way, right? Mm -hmm. But really what you're doing is you're translating this flat rectangle evenly subdivided into the perspectival space, okay? So then you can subdivide again and take this and draw an X through it, right? And then you get halfway there and you subdivide this again, right? And all these X's, they should line up on this same division line here, right? So this is how you begin to make a grid. And then you can take each of these X's and then cross them again, right? And then once you get one, you just go back to the vanishing point. And then you've done a big old grid in linear perspective. And then when you have a grid, then you can put things, add details into it, right? So say this is a wall and you want to put a door that's like a double door that's two of these grid bits wide, right? You just start following the grid, right? And then you would want to knock the door frame inside that. If it's two point perspective, then they're gonna recede, right? Is this making sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, and it just depends on any number of subtle things, right? And then you kind of know that this is on the front plane, but if the door frame is back there, then the actual seam of the door is going to be a little further, a little off of that center line, right? So this would be the seam of the door, then you'd put handles or something, right? So, clean page. What if you wanted to do like, I don't know, a row of windows? So you get your plane receding back to the vanishing point. But let's say you know that there's a window here and it's about this height proportionally. Okay, then you just take each of those points 
each point there, take it back, and then you just start subdividing your windows. Right? So you know the height of all the windows is going to remain constant. And then as you get closer and closer to the edge of this plane, they're going to the spaces are start are going to start to narrow just slightly. Etc. Right. So each one of these bits would be a window. Intuition and sort of an, a rough guess because you know that that if you subdivide in half, right? All things being equal These are gonna be a different width apart So I just kind of make sure that as I go further that that it kind of follows that proportion um, There are there is a mathematical way to do that Right? But you would spend so much time doing the math and geometry that it would slow you down too much and you'd never get anything done. So just know that as you go closer to the vanishing point, the widths narrow. Right? You know. So you know that they're not going to be subdivided in half, it's going to be a little over here. And this isn't going to subdivide in half, it's going to be a little over here. Right? Just like if you, you can't subdivide mathematically in half, but it's a little off. You see what I mean? So using the halves is pretty is pretty easy. And then if you're in one point perspective, you just kind of knock in the frames pretty easily. So this is how you start to add details into the linear perspective. And the details are what sell it, right? So if you get a plane, you know, that's great and all, but then once like how do you get say like all the little intricacies of that window over there? Right? And that's how you do it. Are there questions on that? Okay, cool. Is there anything else you want a demo on as far as perspective goes? So, um, we were talking about last time the inside the box, outside the box with a few people. So remember when you're in two point perspective, you know, if you're looking at an object itself, you're outside the box, right? So you might only be able to see two or three sides, you know, or it'll be like kind of this thing happening. All right, where you see three sides or two sides. But then when you're inside the room, you're inside the box, so you're working with this sort of like, you know, stick figure shape. Not really, but you're working inside, inside the box. So that means that things are going to recede across and not away, right? Does that make sense? So you have the, the, van the vanishing points going, like everything receding across your center of vision rather than receding out from your center of vision. So it's just a matter of picking which way that it goes. So generally, your center of vision is like on the corner or something, so you have to, like in two point, so you say, well, if it's receding to the right, then it's gonna go to the right vanishing point. If it's receding to the left, it goes to the le left vanishing point pretty simple it's just a matter of like getting the feel into your head and hands do you see that so on the on so if I take this plane and convert it into two point I'm crossing so this is receding leftward so it's going to the left vanishing point this is receding rightward so it's going to the right vanishing point okay I think that's all I want to do for now